Hey there, future college students. This video and video series is a series about the most common ACT math problems that you'll encounter on the ACT test. Now, a lot of you have probably done a lot of test strategies and tips and maybe even a few prep classes. What we know from prepping a lot of students is that the best practice really is doing legitimate ACT problems. So what we've tried to do here is pick out the most common ACT math problems that you'll see on any given ACT test date and provide them for you and show you how to work them and show you some strategies on how to work these. So um, if you haven't seen any of the other videos in this series, I recommend you checking out uh, the playlist of the most common ACT math questions. This particular playlist is going to focus on pre-algebra and for this particular video we're going to work on averaging problems. Now averaging problems can show up in a whole bunch of different ways and they can kind of be intermingled with a lot of other topics as well. So, so what our goal here is is to give you a variety of averaging problems that you could see on the ACT. So let's go ahead and get started on that and let's get some ACT practice. Okay, before we get started, what I'd like you to do is look in the description below. There should be a document for you that I am using on this screencast. So, what the best thing for you to do is to actually print that document and work the handful of problems that are on that document first. Then come back and watch the rest of this video. You'll be able to see me work through all the problems, give you the correct answers, give you some strategies of how to work some of these questions a little bit quicker, um, and help you out with your pacing on the actual ACT. So let's go ahead and uh, get to work on those few problems and check out the rest of this video. All right, good luck. All right, welcome back to our videos on common pre-algebra ACT math questions. In this playlist, if you're watching all of the videos in this playlist, we have lots of questions on the various types of pre-algebra questions that they could ask you. This particular video is going to focus on averages, and averages are a very, very popular problem on the ACT math. And there is a large variety of averaging type problems or sometimes what we would call central tendency type problems on the ACT math. So don't be surprised if you get two, three, possibly even four averaging problems on the ACT test. And the other thing that you need to be aware of is these can easily be embedded into much more advanced problems later on in the test. So for right now, we're going to take it from a, from a pre-algebra perspective and kind of give you a little bit of variety here. So we can see in this first question, Shannon's Floral Shop asks each of 20 customers to give a rating on the shop service. The table below summarizes the 20 customer ratings. So we can see six customers gave a rating of three, eight gave a rating of two, so forth and so on. It says, which of the following values is closest to the mean? So here we are with a little bit of math vocabulary. Remember that mean is just a fancy way of saying average. It says, what is the closest to the mean of the 20 customer ratings? Now, let's be clear here this is what we call a frequency table so sometimes you'll see frequency tables throughout the ACT and they will use it from an averaging standpoint sometimes they'll give you the frequency in terms of a graph like a histogram and you will have to take the numbers off of the graph versus taking it off of a table. So there's some kind of combined skills going on in this particular problem. And here's the other issue. If you take all of the customers, you have a large amount of ratings. So for instance, we could say that six customers gave a rating of three. Well, if we were going to do an average with that, we would be like three plus three plus three plus three, plus three, plus three, plus, plus, blah, blah, and, and then keep on going with the twos and then the ones and then the zeros. And so that is going to kind of get really drawn out over time. And of course, we're going to end up dividing that by 20 customers. That's way too much spreading out. You might not even have room on your paper to kind of do all that work. So what we're going to do is we're going to take advantage of a little shortcut called a weighted average. And the way that you do a weighted average is you just simply multiply the value times the frequency. So we have a value of three and we're going to multiply that by six customers. That's the same thing as adding those threes up over here. 
So we're going to do that for all of them. So we got a rating of two. We had eight customers give us rating of two, a rating of one by two customers, and then a rating of zero by four customers. And of course, we know that's just going to be zero. But then we're going to divide that by the total number of customers to get our average. This is what we call a weighted average, and it saves us from having to draw write out 20 numbers strung together. And when we do the math on this, it simply calculates out to 1.8 as the average rating, and we can see that that's going to give us answer choice A. So be sure that you understand these little shortcuts or how to do a weighted average, how to take the numbers out of a frequency table, or how to take the numbers out of what we call a histogram ta uh, graph. So these are a number of ways that they can ask this particular question. All right, this next question has a little bit of everything going on in it. It says, what is the product of the mean and the median of the first six prime numbers? So first of all, this, we, we talked about this in the math vocabulary section. If you, if, you didn't look, if you didn't watch the math vocabulary video, you should check that out because what it basically told you was there's a lot of questions on the ACT where they use math vocabulary and they're not necessarily testing you directly on the math vocabulary. They're just embedding it in the problem. And if you don't understand the math vocabulary, then you're going to have a challenging time working the problem. So you can see here, first of all, you need to know what mean is. We just talked about that being the average. Median, the definition of the median being the middle number of a group of numbers. Well, what are our group of numbers? Well, our group of numbers that we're using are the six prime numbers. And they actually give you a little hint here. Two is the first prime number. So let's list out the six, the first six prime numbers. Now, here's the problem. If you don't know your prime numbers, you're not going to be able to work this. So we'll start this. We're going to eventually find the product. Product meaning multiplication. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the median. Since it's an even number, we actually have to average the two in the middle because we don't have one specific even number. So when we do that, we get a median of six. Then we need to find the mean. And the mean is just a simple average of all the numbers. And when we find the mean, we end up with 6.8. And then of course, we need to find the product of that. So we're going to just take this 6.8 and we're going to multiply it times six, which gives us a value of 41. And so we can see here that that is answer choice D. Okay, in this next problem it says, in a series of five numbers, the mean, median, and mode are all equal to six. So here we go with some vocab again, mean, median, and mode, central tendencies, they all equal to six. Which of the following can be the series? Now, when you get a question like this and they give you the list right here of the five numbers, Sometimes the most straightforward way to do this is to eliminate obvious wrong answers. So if we understand what mean, median, and mode are, then we can quickly eliminate some, some choices. Now, the mean is the average. So that's going to take a little work averaging five different sets of numbers. So that might not be our best way to eliminate bad answer choices. Remember, the median is the middle number. Now that might be useful because if you look at the answer choices, the middle number, they were all of the answer choices were listed from smallest to greatest. And in doing so, the middle number is very apparent. And if you just look at the middle number, six is the middle number or the median for all the list except for one, and that's choice E. So we can go ahead and eliminate choice E right off the bat. Now, mode is the number that is repeated the most. So if we look for the list where 6 is not repeated the most, then we know that we could eliminate that. And if we look at choice A, 6 is only used once, whereas 2 and 10 are used twice. So we know that's out right off the bat. And then it looks like 6 is the most repeated number in the remaining answer choices. So at least we've narrowed down from 5 to 3 sets where we need to average. I want to give you a, a quick little tip. If I did 6 plus 6 and I divide it by 2, my average is going to be 6. So we really don't need to average the 6s in here. We just need to average the remaining numbers in the list, and that is a tricky little shortcut. 
And I'll give you an example. Let's just start with list B. If I, from answer choice B, if I did 2 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 10, and I divided it by 5, I'm going to get an average of 6, which is what we're looking for. So that tells us right off the bat that B has to be the answer. So that saved us a lot of time. I didn't have to do C or D at all. However, I want to show you a different way to do this. I know that these 6s are going to average the 6. So if I did 2 plus 10 and I divided it by two numbers, that ends up giving me the same average. I've, it averages the 6. So I know if the three 6s average the 6 and the 2 and the 10 average the 6, then all five of the numbers have to average to the 6. So anyway, that's a little shortcut that you can use on averaging problems if they're telling you what the number should average to. All right, very good. Okay, put a big star next to this one. This is just the most important averaging question that you could learn how to do. ACT loves this question. It shows up quite a bit. Teachers love this question. Textbooks love this question. And it's the classic missing test question. So let me give you a, an example here. It says, so far, a student has earned the following scores on four 100-point tests, 65, 73, 81, and 82. It says, what, must the score, what score must the student earn on the fifth test? And notice that it's also a 100-point test. That's helpful. It says, what score must the student earn to get an average of 80? So we want to get an average of 80. So if we're going to have five tests, we're going to add up all five tests, divide by five to get the average. So if I take all five tests, 65 plus 73, plus 81, plus 82, plus, I don't know what my fifth test is, but I'm going to divide it by 5, and I know it's going to give me an average of 80. Well, that's the whole point. We don't know what that is. And so whenever there's something there that we don't know, we simply replace that with a variable. And so now, if we solve for the x value, what will happen is we will figure out what they need to make on that fifth test to average an 80. So in doing this, to solve this, we're going to multiply both sides by 5. And if we add up, I'm going to do two steps at once here. I'm going to add up those four numbers. That gives us 301 plus x. And of course, this 5 cleared out the denominator. And 80 times 5 is 400. And then in solving for the x, I get a 99. And so what it tells me is I need to make a 99 out of 100 on the fifth test so that I can get my average to an 80. And if you look at that, that is answer choice D. All right, that is a really, really popular ACT math problem. If you don't learn anything else out of this video, learn that. Make a, make a note of that because that is a very popular problem. And on the last question, you can see we, again, are dealing with mean, median, or mode. So it was very important that you know central tendencies. You know the definitions of this. The reason there's multiple questions with mean, median, and mode on this video is because there are lots of mean, median, and mode questions on the ACT. So make sure you know it. It says the median of a set of nine consecutive integers, math vocabulary, make sure you're aware of that, is 42. What is the greatest of these nine numbers? So what that's basically telling us is that the median is 42. That is the middle number of the list of numbers. So we know that 42 is right in the middle. And it told us that the nine numbers were consecutive integers. That meant one right after the other. So if this is the middle of nine numbers, I'm going to have four numbers on either side of it. So 42, 43, so that's four numbers there. And then I can work backwards as well, and that's four numbers there. So we can see here 42 is our middle number, nine consecutive integers, and it says what is the greatest of these nine numbers? Very simple, just look at our list. 46 is the greatest, so that is answer choice E pretty straightforward. So it's a little manual. You not a, don't necessarily have to do any mathematical work, but you definitely have to understand your math vocabulary. Okay, that's a good, that's a good sampling of averaging questions. If you, if you were able to do those, you probably got this wrapped up pretty good, but you definitely should take a look at some other averaging questions 
because there are a large variety of these types of questions on the ACT math test. Okay, I hope you did well with that and that video helped you out a little bit. If you need more practice, check out our other videos on the most common ACT problems. You can also check out our online course, uh, The Ultimate Review Packet. We've teamed up with another educator named Jacob Clifford to provide you a wonderful ACT online course. It's got 15 hours of videos, over 1,200 practice questions, so you'll get all of the practice that you need to improve on the ACT. If you like the video, be sure to like it. Appreciate you subscribing to the channel, helps us out, and possibly sharing this with a friend. We'll see you in the next video, and good luck. Thank you.